Let's mm. start mm. with this one. All right. So we'll start off a little bit more obscure and we'll work towards the more well-known ones because, to be fair, like there are some games which you're going to expect. Oh, if you've even got any familiarity at all with gaming and or pirates, then you'll see these coming from a mile off some of them. But here are some ones you may not be so familiar with. So let's start off with this one. The Voyage by Mojo Games. Now this is, mm. rather than a kind of action-adventure sort of thing, these are a series of puzzles. So it's a pirate-themed puzzle game in which you have to work your way through a hundred sort of lateral thinking problems. They vary uh, every single time you go onto a new puzzle, it's different. Uh, and it's done by the guys who did uh, a game called Tongue Tied, which was a game which featured two dogs who were joined by the tongue, and you had to kind of wang them around all these different platforms. Uh, the developer is called Mojo Bones, and they're actually rather good. Um, mm. And this game is also actually rather good as well. Uh, so it's just going to get me to do something very simple to start with. First of all, you had to remove all of the gems just by touching those blocks of colours, and that got rid of them. And you might think, all right, then, well, that's a simple simple test. And if it's going to be a whole game of, you know, crappy colour block puzzles, then I'm bored. But no. Then get out. That Walk the plank, you might say. Exactly. Because <laughs> puns. But no, that's not what this is going to be. Because now I've got to go and do an entirely different puzzle. See, look. This is called Marley's Marbles. You have to leave only one marble on the board and tap and drag marbles to roll it and hit other marbles to knock them off. So this is a completely different puzzle. So what I need to do now is... If I uh, swipe on one of these marbles, it will roll until it hits another ball. So I'll start off by swiping this one at the top down. Boom. See, it rolls, it hits, it knocks the other one off. Now I'm going to do the same thing going to the right. Boom. It knocks that one off. And then I'm going to go up. And that locks the top one off. And then finally, roll to the left. And it leaves just one marble on the middle of the screen. Job done. And that's Job a, done indeed. And that's a, se that's a separate pirate. So a separate pirate, separate puzzle. Uh, that's two of 100 puzzles that you can uh, try and solve in this game. So it's one of those nice ones where you can sit down almost while you're doing other things. It's one of those ones you can just sort of sit there and go, eh, you know, and mess about and play with them um, whilst you're perhaps, I don't know, half watching TV or something like that. Uh, I quite like these types of puzzle solvers. Now, here's one where you have to depress all the buttons that are on the screen. So if I press this one, it doesn't stay down. That one, it doesn't stay down. Ooh, that third one, that stayed down. Now, what I need to do then is work out in what order I have to uh, press these okay. to keep them all depressed. Uh, there's two. Right. One, no, two. Well, you know what you could do to keep them all depressed? You could just say mean things. That's true. So I now need to remember the pattern. Oh, yes, I remember the pattern. Did it within the time limit. That unlocks the box. And I have another successful puzzle. So that's three out of the potential 100. What's up? Uh, some people saying they've come here from the front page random but impressed. Thank you, Jordan. We appreciate Hello. it. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, and if you are on the front page, come on in. We're talking about mobile games. Oh, what's that? Have you got a mobile phone? Of course you yes. have, because it's the 21st century. Therefore, this relates to you and you directly. This relates to you. Come and yeah. get involved. Uh, today's come and strike a weight. <laughs> today's particular theme is pirates and we've started off our little stream with the voyage which is a pirate themed puzzle game uh, we're only going to be playing these for five or ten minutes and then showing you a series of about five games over the course of the next hour so stay tuned uh, right now i've got to cover the treasure now they showed some points on the map there i was actually looking at the camera not at the screen and i have to now remember roughly where the treasure is so if i put this one here this one here this one here and this one here i think that's mm -hmm. about right oh so close does that count damn Okay, retry. See, I wasn't really paying attention, but the idea is you've got to remember where those red marks are. So there, 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 and there. So I've got to remember that, and then I've got to drag the appropriate little treasure chests onto those parts once they have vanished. So here we go. I've got to now cover the treasure again. So there, 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 and there. Let's say that. Yeah, that's pretty much bang on the money. And the pirate is happy, the little skeleton bone dude. Nice. Right, result. There yeah. So, excellent. So you've satisfied a pirate. Oh. And, uh, like, so what's the whole, like, idea of this? Is it basically like, because to me, it looks like you're playing a sort of Professor Layton. Yeah. 
puzzle agent kind of game? Like, is it does it feel like that, or is is there much of a story to it? It's not really a story per se. It's just the idea that you're talking to this ghost pirate dude, and he's saying you've got to go and do all these puzzles. It's not really much of a plot to it, to be honest with you. It's just a series of puzzles strung together, but they're quite nice, elegant little puzzles. And the fact that each one is different makes it very kind of makes you want to keep coming back to it, basically. Uh, this one, th I remember doing this one when we reviewed it. This is the trickiest one to do. So you have to stop the fuse exactly at the 19 second mark. And you don't have a timer, so here we go. I'm just going to ignite it. Here we go, boom. Now I've got to, in my head, count 19 seconds. Which I haven't been doing, and I probably should have paid attention to. Uh, and then once you hit the 19 second mark, mark what you think is 19 seconds, you press uh, the button again and stop it. Now I haven't okay. I haven't been counting, so I'm just gonna say now. Oh! 20 seconds of 48. I was actually quite close. Okay, I'm gonna retry that. Now I think if it keeps the same pattern. Yeah, it does keep the same pattern. So what you've got to do is instead of relying on a timer or a stopwatch, you have to look at where the flame is going along the string and using the pins and the guides and everything, work out where the 19 second mark will be. So I reckon it's gonna be just beyond this little hook here. Oh, 15 seconds, it went quicker that time. That's rubbish, okay, we try. Of course, the easy cheaty way to do this is just to go and start your stopwatch or something on your phone uh, and do 19 seconds, but that technically is kind of cheaty. Oh, I wasn't looking mm -hmm. that time. This, it changes every time. Stop the fuse on 17 seconds. So you're not, you're not paying attention. Ah. It's almost like you're presenting a, a Twitch channel. Uh, something along those lines. So um, the Touch Thinker has said, uh, uh, I think Microsoft's buying Minecraft because we're talking about we're talking about all sorts of things today. Uh, but this is the only thing, uh, only time that we'll actually talk about Minecraft today because uh, it's boring. We'll talk about it another day. We'll talk about it on the podcast on Thursday. Um, he's saying uh, Minecraft being purchased by Microsoft could result in Pocket Edition coming to Windows Phone, and uh, that could be excellent for Windows Phone. And you know what? I think that ties in with the whole app spy philosophy. If you know what, awesome. Thumbs up. If it does, I can't wait. I really, I really do hope that Windows Phone gets it because yeah. I think that would be awesome. Uh, that would be a really, really yes. lovely thing. Because by gosh, it needs games. But now, listen, James. Yar, pirates. Yar. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it at games. some point. No, you have to say it all the this, time. This, this, this uh, tea towel. Sorry, this bandana, this piratey bandana on. I'm wearing. Is it making uh, it warm? It's quite hot, actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's sunny outside. This is not the weather to be a pirate in, unless you're actually out pont the seven seas, in which case it's fine. Um, right, he's very delighted. So here's the ghosty pirate dude, and he thinks we should be celebrating with a game of Pickin' the Chicken. Okay. Uh, which I can then do so by buying uh, a game with a little gold coin. So I've done about five of the, the little puzzles there, just to show you what it looks like. There are a hundred of these. It's only a pound forty nine, I think it is. Yeah, one pound forty nine or one dollar ninety nine. It's well presented, and if you like brain teasers and stuff with a bit of variety, so you're not just doing the same puzzle again and again, it's good fun. It's a really nice game. There's a review for it up on Pocket Gamer. If you want to go and look at it, it got a pretty good there score, uh, and you can mm -hmm. go and get it available right now. So that's called The Voyage, and it's well pirated. Right, let's move on to another game because we've got limited time. So keeping with the pirate theme, which is today's streaming theme, everything about pirates, because international speak like a pirate day on Friday. Everybody Arr. everybody, get excited. Get your R's warmed up. Get your vocal cords Go ready on. for a good bit of... Yarr! Did, what did you say? Uh, get your R's warmed up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, okay. That's a different kind of stream. But yeah, let's keep going. Uh, okay, fine. We're going to keep with the sort of puzzle game theme of the stuff that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Um, now, this game has been created by a quite famous person who also had a hand in one of the other games that we will be showing over the course of today. So allow me to introduce Scurvy Scallywags. Now, this Ooh. is another vertically oriented pu uh, puzzle type game, so apologies for the black lines either side. This is a kind of match, pu color matching puzzle sort of thing, which has actually been done by, you can see at the top there, it says Gilbert and Kulzarek. It's been done in collaboration with Ron Gilbert, who's one of the Ooh. guys behind oh, quite a famous pirate-based game, really. Um, you can just swipe the screen to the left, and you swipe each individual element to create your own pirate. He looks quite piratey. Old Notchy, mm -hmm. it's called. Fabulous. All right, then. So we're hitting the continue. Now there's going to be a little weird storyline to tie all this together. Uh, even though it looks like the pirates are actually sort of doing their piratey performances on, like, a stage. So it's like you're taking the role of an actor playing a pirate. 
That's what it looks like. So you've got to save to the nearby island and go and do quests. These quests mm -hmm. consist of... Oh, hello. Let's go up to this Ooh. little foresty bit here and get involved. Color matching stuff. So it's another color matching type of game, which of which they have about a billion on iOS, let's be honest. But this one's done quite stylishly, and it's done with a little bit of kind of humor and fun. So here's how to play. You just got to swipe to the left to make the pieces slide to the right or left. There we go. So if I do that. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Yep, yep, yep. I'm hitting. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. So uh, what you do is, instead of tapping uh, to either draw lines together, you know how some color matching games you just draw a line through the colors that you want to... Yeah, like Puzzle and Dragon. Exactly. Uh, this isn't quite the same. So what you do is you take a bit of a, the puzzle, you grab one of the colors or one of the objects, and then you slide it up. For example, this can, I put my finger on it and I drag it up, and that swaps it, like swaps it around with the object that's immediately next to it. Uh, and this is how you join colors up. So for example, if I want to create three down here with these purple ones, I can drag this one to the left. And there you go, that creates a three, a line of three. I can get rid of. Your pirate's in the middle, but you have to make sure you protect your pirate whilst also attacking other enemies who appear on the board. In that sense, it becomes a bit like those tile-based roguelikes, like Dungeon Lot and things like that, which is slightly different. Yeah. So here you go, I'm gonna move, let's have a look. I'll move this one up here. That creates a nice three. Now an enemy pirate has appeared. So this green okay. skeleton bastard. So you need to move your uh, pirate up towards him. And when they do that, he gets an attack in. And they get to sort of do a little bit of piratey combat, which is slightly Ooh. novel. So let's move this pirate over here. Boom, we'll do that. Let us get this one down here. We'll move that down. Let's try and do some speed swapping about. Because a lot of this stuff gets about getting into a rhythm, isn't it? So let's have a parrot mm -hmm. going on there. And we've got some shiny silver... No, purpley swords. Each one you can see has a different effect. So I created... I joined up those swords. And it gave me power boosts. Joining up the gold coins, you get plus three gold. If you join up the... Those little skull and crossbone things. I don't even know what that does. What does it do? It gives you... It says power and sweets. I don't know what that is. But basically, I'm also powering up my pirate. And giving him loads of attacks. So that when I do come into contact with that wretched skeleton git, uh, he'll be mm -hmm. able to take him out, which is hopefully uh -huh. what I'm going to do any time now. Got to find a way to get them next to each other. No, I can't do that one there. Let's go this one over here, and then if we that one there, let's do that, and then maybe this guy over here, and then uh, loads of parrots, because, you know, we all need parrots. So bring this one down there. <laughs> let's say that can go up there. More parrots over here. Parrots are plenty. Oh, hello. Starting, starting to... There we go, brilliant. The monster has moved on to uh, my tile. So we're now going to do a bit of combat. I can swap to attacks. I'm going to swipe up. And there, they're having a mad pirate scuffle. And because I had five power, I've taken them out. And I've drawn nice. first skeleton pirate blood. Even though nice. skeletons don't have blood, but whatever. Yeah. Mm. So I've now leveled up. My pirate has gained a level, which means I can now put a point into either my critical attack, my dodge, my power, my gold, or my damage. Damage is already on 100%, so I'm going to plus my critical. There we go. It increases my chances of hitting monsters when I do attack, so lovely. Mm. Now, James, I think I think there are lots of questions that I could ask about this, okay. uh, but I think the most pressing one is, uh, why do you have a pirate hat? Like... How did, did you just have it lying around? Was it part of a fancy dress costume? Well, uh, or is it just something you do on a Friday night? Well, yes to all of the above. Uh, okay. Well, no, no. So, 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 to the casual observer, like I said before, you might think that I had just, I don't know, grabbed a tea towel and then wrapped right. it around my head like a... Sure, but, but, but it looks way too pro for that. Exactly. Obviously, that's not what's happened. This is from the Haute Couture Pirate Summer Collection. If you're not, if you keep updated with a pirate magazine, which I do, mm -hmm. um, yep. uh, GP, which is a guy's pirate magazine, then you will know that this is one of the most sought-after bits of pirate finery uh, that you're likely to find. I've also got the waistcoat. Hope you like yep. that. Nice waistcoat. There you go. Lovely. Marvelous. I'm um, not sure about the t-shirt, but whatever. Yeah, I was rushed. It was last minute. Okay. It just occurred to me that we were doing a pirate stream, so I should probably dress like a prick. Mm -hmm. It's the only way to do it. Um, I'm having. You, I'm not going to speak like a pirate the whole time because that will be. Exhausting. Where is now, uh, James? What what is a pirate's favourite shop? Oh God, here we go. Oh, I should know this is going to happen. A pirate's favourite shop. Uh, I don't know. What is a pirate's favourite shop, Peter? Argos. Oh no. Oh. 
Oh, that's bad, but I bet you it's not the worst one we're going <laughs> to hear. It's not. It's not. <laughs> um, Amazing. So, uh, if you've got crap pirate jokes, keep them coming. Please. Put them in the chat room. Uh, yes, because obviously, James, you're playing on your iPad. True. Uh, I'm, I'm watching you play on your iPad. I'm also... Uh, app spy in the chat window and uh, making sure that everything awesome is happening along there. Um, there's a lot of chat about this being sort of like just a kind of average puzzle game. Do yeah. you feel like well, it, like maybe it's not Gilbert's best work? Well, I mean, it's it's like their attempt to get into in on the match three territory, which is huge business. We all know this on uh, iOS, but it's weird because it's got like linear progression. It's got almost not a story, but it's got uh, maps that you're trying to conquer. Um, hang on, swap this guy over and get. Yeah, I know. I'm trying. Get, get rid of it. Okay, I'm doing a weird spinny thing now uh, in order to try and match up three things and get some stuff. I unlocked a shanty skill. A shanty verse. Yay me. Uh, so yeah, it's another battery puzzler, sure, um, but they are trying to tie it together loosely with this kind of character RPG upgrade system where you get more points. I've just upgraded my uh, dodge facilities there, that's handy. Uh, and you have to go and fight bosses and stuff like that. So it's slightly different. I'm not going to say it's the most amazing thing in the world, because it isn't. No. Um, mm -hmm. But it is slightly, it's kind of got a little bit more polish and a little bit more personality than your average match three puzzler. So, you know, you've got to give it that. It's, it's trying to do something slightly different, although, I'll, you know, everyone's probably a bit sick of match three games at this point. I know I am. Uh, because everybody insisted on doing them <laughs> after a while. So, yeah. you know, because they made a ton of money and once you get into the territory of things like, I don't know, Puzzle and Dragons and uh, Bejeweled and all the other match three puzzle games that everybody did that made a lot of money, everyone decided that they were going to do one of their own. So this is Ron Gilbert's uh, effort. It's all right. It's not too bad. Um, it's certainly piratey. It's well piratey. Maximum yeah. pirate, I would say. Um, <laughs> Ma yeah. So, I mean, pirates out of ten. Ten pirates out of ten. <laughs> uh, fun gameplay out of ten. Pro probably, I would say, according to the review, an eight. An eight? Bloody hell, Harry. <laughs> Yeah. Right, calm down. No, like I say, it's actually all right. It's, it's, it's doing something a little bit different. Look, I'm on a map screen right now. Here's a, a kind of linear progression thing I have to follow, going from bay to bay and cove to cove and fighting bosses and leveling characters. It's more than your average touch three game. So you know, you've got to give, I've got to give it credit where credit's due. Look, I'm sailing my little pirate ship along now. Look at him go. He's gonna go and find stuff. Probably coral. And yeah. maybe a box and possibly a, a squid. Maybe Jones's blocker. Exactly, that's the stuff. So there you go. I'm on the map. I move to the next bit. There he is. And then again, we match more things uh, into groups of three. Because <laughs> yar. That's yar. why yar. Uh, excellent. Alright, and so uh, there's another alternative pirate game if you wanted to get warmed up for Speed Like a Pirate Day. Scurvy Scallywags. It's free on the App Store. How's about that? Um, I think it's free anyway. Pretty sure it's free. Yeah. Uh, you can get it right now on iPhone and or iPad if you want to. So there you are. Let's put the place to drop and let's move to a different piratey game. Three to go. Running out of time. What can we go with next? Let's do... Let's do this one. Because, to be honest, this is the one I know least about. Okay. This is something that, uh, Peter, you actually mm -hmm. uh, thought through at me. Because you had it on your, uh, phone and I didn't. So... Let's bust up this one. We're going to play Sid Meier's Pirates. Ooh, now, I, okay, good. I've never played this before. This is a first time for me, so I'm going to go for a new game. Now, Sid Meier, very, very well known for all his strategy stuff, mm. doesn't he? Mm. So Throw most of that out of the window. Oh, really? I mean, there are, there are strategy elements to it. Okay. Um, and there, there are sort of management moments to it as well. Mm -hmm. But it's not, it's a bit more action-y. Oh, than really? other stuff like yeah like there are there's rhythm action sequences where you're trying to win the favor of a lady mm -hmm. uh, by dancing uh, that's, how I, that's is, how I do peter that's how right? i do there are sword fights that you can win and or lose there's there is sort of ship management and crew management um, there's lots of different aspects to the game okay. and it's uh, it is a, it, it was a kind of milestone for Sid Meier but not one and one remembered fondly but one not particularly one that did amazingly well right well, I'm signing with Spain. Uh, it's given me an option mm -hmm. to sign up with one of three fleets, so I'm just sticking with the Mr. Incognito title. Um, but I am delighted to discover that already we've got a lot of dialogue where people are saying yar and ye. So I'm already on board with this game. It's a big winner, clearly. 
Uh, Pavan Deeps just chimed in saying, when is Goat simul Simulator coming out? Need. Um, yeah, uh, we're going to be doing something on that later in the week. So that's a fairly big clue as to when it's coming out. Just to give you a heads up, we've already done a hands-on with the game, which you can see on the Apps by YouTube channel as well. Uh, we found it at Gamescom, Mark and I. So we've played it, and we can show you what it looks like, even though it's a very, very early build. So, I've just sailed into port, Port Cumana, the modest mm -hmm. Spanish stronghold. And now, I'm set sail for another little island thing. Off he goes. Where am I now? I can choose to enter or move around this area. So I'm going to enter Margarita. Yeah, you are. So it's the Spanish what? village of Margarita. It's clean and prosperous, mm -hmm. and it's too small and too poor to hold much interest from a trader, apparently. So there are a bunch of little menus options that I can look at. Uh, I've just tapped the first one. It says, my dear Mr. Incognito, please come in. You may be interested to know that we are at war with the perfidious English. Perfidious Ugh, English? The English. We're so perfidious. The slimy French and the greedy Dutch. This game is well racist. I am pleased yeah, really to offer is. a letter of mark, which authorizes you to plunder and sink the ships of our enemies. Oh, I'm all about the plundering, as you can see from this mm -hmm. uh, tea towel. So, the nearest enemy city is Krakow, uh, which I've got to go now and probably do some damage to, which I'm all about. So you've played this a bunch, Peter. Uh, what's the point of this here game? Well, the whole point of this here game it was to provide a more accessible piratey experience than what was really kind of previously being provided. There were a couple of different pirate strategy games around at this time. Port Royale, I want to say there's one called Buccaneers, okay. there's a third one I think called, I want to say it's called like Corsairs or something like that. And they all felt quite similar in that they were quite deep and quite complex. Right. And Sid Meier's Pirates goes the opposite way. And not only that, but this is a game with a finite kind of end to it and multiple endings. Oh, there are ways okay. to be fantastic and rule the seas and be good and, 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 and be evil, to be a success or to be a failure, to right. die at sea or to like you know live victoriously. It's really, really cool in a lot of ways. Right, so I've just upgraded my ship a little. Bit. I've also gone and talked at the tavern and found out some information about where a, a ship is located and that's been added to my map so that's a benefit of talking to people um, and then presumably I just set sail and go and find stuff to do some mm -hmm. plunderings and whatnot yes? yeah nice yeah. all right cool okay so I'm gonna set, find the map uh, I want I want to say a set sail but it can't yet mm, nope let's go away and leave town there we go the spinning wheel in the bottom corner. The city of Margarita is available in auto sailing now. Hooray! So I can. Oh, I can change the sails. I can. I can hoist the mainsails. Yes. Oh, please do. Huge win. And now I'm just dragging it around on my finger, going. Woo. And here, here's a here's a ship. I can choose to <laughs> either attack the ship. I'm not going to do that because they're a Spanish ship. Because that would be bad. Hey, this is awesome. I'm just like zooming around the pirate seas now. Woo. This is kind of cool. I like this. It is. It is kind of cool, <laughs> isn't it? So, so I want to um, see where the. Like, how do I get a map up on the screen when I'm sailing around, or do I just have to like hope for the best? Let's go to the I menu. Say that there is a way of doing it. Uh, Let's see yeah. if I look at the map on the menu. Compass, possibly. Yeah, maybe. Oh, here we go. Well, no. This is like a linear path. I want to see where I actually am. It shows mm -hmm. me my current quest, my path of revenge, lost relatives. God, this is quite complex, actually, isn't it? Mm, okay. It really is. It can get very, very complex, but Aha. it can also stay quite quite simplistic, Here's which is kind of why it works for mobile. Awesome, alright then, so I found my map, it tells me where I am, and I can now head back in that direction. Let's 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 carry on. I'm quite, frankly, I just like tooling about in this little ship. This is quite neat. Mm. <laughs> so you, yeah. you've played this through, this came from your account, uh, Peter, like how yeah. how long does this kind of thing last? It's a very... Uh, in it, well, it, so it, it, it sort of encourages you to do multiple playthroughs, side with different sides, go and, uh, go and achieve different things. So marrying uh, the daughter of, uh, you know, some, some alliance or whatever it is, like, that's an achievement. That's something that you can kind of aim towards. Okay. Conquering everything, getting the most money. All of these things are things that you can kind of work towards. Um, the mobile version, I actually downloaded the mobile version because it went free at one point. Ah, right, okay. Very, very briefly. And I toured around with it a little bit. And I like it. I really do like it. But I kind of thought to myself, oh, God, I've already played this on, on, on PC. Right. It's one of those times where I was kind of like, I'd been eyeing it up for a while. And then I realized I didn't, I didn't really want it. Oh, okay. Um, which is probably, yeah. But it is very good. And it is, I think it's now quite tough to get a hold of. I don't know whether or not Pirates is actually available on Steam uh, at 
the moment like that. a pc game not really a console experience okay um but this one you know it's got all of these multiple choices it's got all of this additional layer of strategy elements and all these sorts of things and seeing how the game plays out each time is always really fascinating there's a lot of dynamic stuff as well like sometimes you know just because in one playthrough the spanish will be totally fine with you doesn't mean necessarily that on the next one you, they'll be fine with you again gotcha okay um so yeah lots and lots of replayability well, i'm kind of zooming around in the middle of like what appears to be a completely empty ocean oh i have i've literally look at me i've buggered off into the completely mm -hmm. random part let's let's about turn uh, all hands to port starboard i don't know they're all yeah you're you're a natural at this yeah i know i'm all um, about the pirates me so I'm going to zoom off in this direction. Uh, yeah. I like the fact that he appears to be like have jet engines fitted to this pirate ship. This is some kind of like yeah. nuclear powered <laughs> super schooner. I love it. This yeah. is awesome. Ra racing around the old, uh, the old seven seas. I, yeah, I kind of want to find someone to fight though, because I previously I didn't fight those guys because they were Spanish, and that would be self defeating slightly. But I'd quite like mm. to hook up with a an evil looking pirate bastard. I mean, you can, I believe you can actually. I, I'm Ooh. sure you probably can. Uh, you can Captain, the men are starving. Like, fights with ports. Oh, there we are. Oh dear. Oh. I should probably have done something about that, yeah, and I, I, I totally haven't. Food. Oh, here we go. I'm about to hit the port of St. Augustine. Let's, yeah, get in, in there. there. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. Have a word. I will. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. St. Augustine's up the top corner there. Hey! Spanish smuggler. You, Spanish smuggler. I'm going to attack you just because you happen to be nearby. Which sort of sucks. Attack! Are you sure you want to attack this Spanish ship, which is probably my friend? Yeah. <laughs> Totally, for the sake of the stream, let's have a fight. Mm -hmm. So, I use my little cannon button to fire. This is the in-game tutorial. That's great. Alright, here's my ship. Use a cannon to fire. Ooh, hello. So, I'm, I'm hitting the cannon button. And what do I do? Oh, I hit this one to fire. Oh, I see, I see. Alright, alright, alright. So, let's get, a, let's get a broadside, this guy. Yeah, got him! Nice! That was sweet. So, I'm going to... Keep trying to attack him, so I need to get kind of alongside him. So if I can control my pirate ship with one hand and then pull alongside him and then go boom. Oh, look at that! That was beautiful. That was beautiful pirating. Oh. There was um yeah. well, back in the day, and I mean back in the day when you could still get games on uh, floppy disks in game. Uh, I picked up a like shareware version yeah. of one of these sort of hardcore simulator ship ship games and it was all about like naval combat I, I must have bought it when I was nine or something like that and some twonks in game let me sort of just buy it oh, yeah. it wasn't like gruesome or violent or anything like that but it was just I was so flipping boring and I'm so glad that games like the Assassin's Creed series like uh, Sid Meier's Pirates you know um, like Port Royal 3 have actually like improved ship to ship combat since those times of like, oh no, I think what I'd be interested in is the exact elevation of all of the cannons and uh, what exactly what shot I'm going to Are use. Are you saying you, you just weren't kind of... interested in that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> As a nine-year-old, I was just like, I just want to go on an adventure. <laughs> uh, and uh, oh, yeah, never, never ended up with that. Now, uh, we've got some chat in here. Now, first of all, I will say, Jackzack, you have absolutely been knocking it out of the park with uh, with the jokes. Why oh, really? is pirating addictive? They say once you lose your first hand, you get hooked. That's a classic example of uh, the, some of the quality that he's coming up with in there. So again, pirate puns, pirate jokes, put them in there. I'm so um, sorry we even started this. I know. Other people are talking about um, uh, who, should, who should be doing pirate games and uh, what sort of pirate games should be, ma be made next. And uh, the most amazing example that I hadn't really thought of has just come up. Rockstar. What if Rockstar were to make a pirate? Oh, what? Grand Ship Auto. Grand Theft, yeah. Grand Theft um, Navy. Grand Theft Schooner. Yeah, that would be the one yeah. to do. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. Well, I suppose that that's what Assassin's Creed good. Black Flag was a bit, wasn't it? Yeah, like an open a, world yeah. piratey, you know. And and the the lead character was a bit of a vagabond and, yeah. and all of that stuff. But they did Red Dead so well, they captured that era so well. Mm -hmm. And uh, like the water stuff in Grand Theft Auto V, I've been told is absolutely amazing. And I'm really looking forward to playing it when I eventually get the next the next gen version of it. Mm. Um, Sorry, I'm, but, I'm just, I like sailing. I like sailing about. This is actually really quite good fun. It's enjoyable, isn't it? I like just roaming around the seven seas, being an ass. Yeah, being an asshole. I I, 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 I quite went arse. Yeah, I quite approve. Um, all right, then we'll leave this one where it is as well because we're running out of time. But Sid Meier's Pirates, a little bit more strategic, a little bit more thoughtful. 
helpful, but it's kind of a full-on pirate sim. So if you fancy a bash on that, you can still get it now. £2.99 or $4.99 on the iPad. It might be a little bit cheaper on the iPhone, but uh, still available, so you can go on and fill your piratey boots. Uh, right, amazing. We'll throw the placeholder up again. Let's do the last two. Last two games. Okay, we're going to do this one. It's funny what, what? how many of these pirate games just have pirates in the title. Yeah. They don't like Scurvy Scallywags gets points for actually not just being called Pirates Match 3. Yeah, thumbs up to you, Scurvy Scallywags. It's nuts. This game, in case you haven't worked out what it is, because uh, I haven't shown you yet, is inspired by historical events and characters. Although the work, the work of fiction, and it's been done by groups of people with multiple faiths and... Please don't have a go at us. <laughs> yeah, because uh, don't take this seriously, because it's not serious. It's Assassin's Creed Pirates. Uh, yeah, so this is the slightly daft piratey spin-off that went alongside Assassin's Creed Black Flag when it got released onto iOS. So we've got our own little Assassin's creed game. It was actually originally launched as a premium game. I think it was £2.99 or $4.99. Yeah, so it was, yeah. Uh, but now it's free to play. They made a change up. Uh, so now you can download it for nada and uh, get involved if you want to. I played it for a while when it first came out as a, as a premium game. And I'm interested to see how it's changed now that it's free to play. I don't know what, what stuff has, has, has been altered, but I still remember from playing it originally, it's a bit arcadey and silly. So it's mm. not trying to be Assassin's Creed Black Flag on iOS. It's nothing like that, in fact. It's a group of like fun little mini-games that you get involved with. So you have to steer your little pirate ship around, you have to get into fights, which involves its own little kind of swipe based mini game which you use um one of the things you can say is it's very nicely presented good looking game you get these little sequences this is all done in game graphics so uh, i'm getting attacked by the looks of it by another piratey dude and here's a new player in the whole assassin's creed universe this guy called alonzo ship is under attack maybe you should escape I'm talking to my other dude it'll take more than ropes to hold me back friend and then there's going to be some Piratey bants going on. Here we go. Labus! This guy. Surrender merchant. I am Olivier Levasseur. Otherwise known as Labus. And I need to enlist some of your men. And now he's going to argue with Captain Barnes. Not really that fussed about it. So it all plays out in this very kind of old fashioned, like the original Grand Theft Auto had, where it was just like yeah. those pop up art people and a little bit of text. But oh look, it's gone and done a jolly good sinking of the boat. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Right, man. Well. That's so what happens, though. Is you, it's, it's what you do. It's a do. cold, hard world. The world of a, pi of a pirate. Exactly. I, I'm told. You raise your flags, you takes your chance. Yeah. So, there we go. Here's the ship with the piratey flag upon it. Let's skip past some of this cutscene nonsense. I actually like to do a bit of driving. Basically, Alonso gets his own ship. So now, that's you. You get to take control of your very own piratey vessel. How, can't, can't say any fairer than that. Um, this guy, yeah, he was a prisoner. Now he's captain. Now, here we go. I've got a pirate ship. Whee. So you need to tap on the thing on the right hand corner. Uh, that increases your speed. That puts up the mainsails essentially. And then you put your finger on the old wheel in the middle of the screen and look, and you can steer your pirate ship, which Ooh. is kind of badass. I always quite like this. It was all kind of lovely. So I'm heading for this first little point. You can basically choose between two, two flag speeds. So I can increase, tap this to increase my speed again. Uh, so you kind of got like two gears on your pirate ship. Um, you also got an anchor that you can drop, because that's kind of piratey, right? You got a weigh anchor at some point. Mm. And then you got to shout it at someone else, though. You don't weigh anchor, you shout, weigh anchor! All right, whoa! And then okay. one, of your, one of your pirate hands blokes does it. There we go. So I've now reached the first checkpoint. It's just a little testy thing. There you go. You drag and hold the wheel. Very good. Yes, I know that already. Thank you. Full sails! Turn to port. I think left is port. I don't know which is which. No idea. Uh, and then aim for the next checkpoint. Dun, dun, dun. That's too slow, and that's much faster. So yeah, only two speeds. Um, and you're heading from checkpoint to checkpoint. I'm going to rendezvous with this here ship. And then beyond this, what you also do is you get into pirate scuffle fights, where, similar to the little thing you saw in Sid Meier's pirate just then, you get to launch cannonballs at your adversaries and you have to control the way your pirate ship moves, sort of jumping left and right and, and all that sort of stuff. But in the meantime, you just kind of take in the view. You drink in now, the piratey surroundings. Soak it up, because this <laughs> game is gorgeous. It's not bad. It looks pretty alright uh, for a mobile game. I think some people are a bit confused when it first came out and they maybe assumed it would be 
an actual Assassin's Creed game where you're taking control of a dude third person jumping from ship to ship or running along rooftops and crap like that. And they went, this isn't Assassin's Creed, this is weird. Uh, but it was never going to be Assassin's Creed, let's be honest. They did the sensible thing, to be honest with you, which is let's make a yeah. game that actually works for mobile. Uh, yeah, because the last time the last time somebody made an, a, a true Assassin's Creed game for mobile was Gameloft. And, like, that was... That was weak. It was. That was a very weak entry. Pretty weak source. So here you go. I've tapped on the button to uh, activate the cannonball. <coughs> I then move left and right to choose where I wanted to aim. And then once I've chosen it, I release. And boom. All the cannonballs fire. And he takes a shot at all those enemies. At the enemy who was there. Uh, that's pretty sweet. Now I have to wait for the cannons to reload. Which has now mm -hmm. happened. I can now tap again. Move left and right to choose my shot. Release. Boom! Another bang on shot. You can see it just charging there at the bottom of the screen. But now, the ship is about to be destroyed. So, I've tapped the left hand side of the screen, and the ship has dodged left to avoid it. And I'm going to do the same thing now by swiping right. Tap, tap the right side of the screen. Boom! He's now avoided the other group of cannons. Now, this guy is about to take a massive shot with a huge, broad spectrum of fire. So, I can't dodge it. So, what I have to do is use this, the spider shot. And that's going to interrupt the state of play. So I've got to now join these dots in the right order. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, like that. Bam! That it's, shot has interrupted his attack. It's very arcadey, isn't it? Very, it's yes, very, it's very arcadey. arcadey. Of course it is. It was never going to be anything else. Nah. Now I've got to sink, sink the ship. It's now moving backwards and forwards a bit. So release. So you have to consider the fact that it's moving backwards and forwards and aim a little bit in front or behind it, depending on the kind of attack it's going to make. Wait, dodge! There we go. Shot. That's another excellent dodge there. And I'm now going to take another shot. Now I'm fully charged. I'm going to go up ahead of it a bit. Release. Fire. Boom. That pirate ship is sank. I have scallied mm. his wag. Oh, that wag is so scallied. So Kurt needs a ride. So uh, if you can show the pulled out camera view, if you if you get a chance, like there is apparently a couple of different views on here um, that that you can kind of show off. But like I think the main point of it is. Every single part of this game looks absolutely beautiful. When you zoom right in and you're on the deck, it looks excellent. It looks like it's the, you know, it's a pretty decent analogy of the 360 version of, of, of Assassin's Creed uh, Black Flag. You know, it, it's getting pretty close. It looks, no, no, it looks and very nice for a, a mobile game. And it, it really I does. I think it's the sensible thing to not try and recreate the game because it would handle horribly on a touchscreen. You don't want to play Assassin's Creed it really Black would. Flag yeah. on a mobile game. It would feel awful. Um, so yeah. you do the sensible thing and you make a little kind of complementary mobile version where it plays to the strengths of the touchscreens. It's not a serious game. It's not amazing or anything, yeah. don't get me wrong. But it, it would have been much, much worse if they just tried to dump the console game on here. It would have been ridiculous. Mm. Um, so it's, mm. it's sort of silly and it doesn't try and be anything more than that, but is more enjoyable than you might think. It's kind of larks. However, I can't say for the free-to-play elements because obviously we're not going to hit the free-to-play wall during this little 10-minute session. Um, and the last one I played it and when it was reviewed, it was a premium game. So mm. I'm not sure what's been changed in that regard. So here you go. Just to show you the other, the other uh, scales, I can zoom out there. I've just zoomed out and I've now got a, a really nice wide view where I can look okay. around. Look at that. There's my pirate ship. Marvellous. Uh, and I can also steer left and right while I'm in zoomed out mode. I can zoom in again, boom, there I am back on the deck. And away we go, that's lovely. So I've now got a head for that little information point over there. So let's do that. Tap here to access the tactical view. There's my map and there's a top down version. And you can also, rather than just steering constantly, you know, on the seven seas, you can just draw your path to the next ship. So mm. I just swipe my finger across and there you go, there it follows a dotted line. There are moments of, uh, is it like ship stealth at some point? You know, where you actually have to avoid being detected, That's which I always right, thought yeah. was quite, quite funny. Like this idea that there are gigantic hulking ship. You hide behind an island. The sea. That's what you do. Yeah. You like hide behind an island, and then it goes past, and you're like, hee, -hee, -hee and then you scoot <laughs> after it. I'm a ninja ship. I know. It's, <laughs> it's a bit silly, obviously, but it's, it it's kind of cool. But there we are. So there's a there's a slightly bigger ship pulling up alongside. It looks quite mighty. Mm -hmm. It's Labus again. It's Captain Battaglia now, you jerk. With a small and boat, you can hardly one, of, yeah, one yeah. of the very cool things about Assassin's Creed Pirates, and this is absolutely true, if you, if, if you get a chance to play the game and uh, uh, do look this up online, the story that it is telling is based on a real pirate story 
it's one of the few pirate stories that actually st like still exists. Oh, yeah. Most of most of our pirate knowledge, pirate knowledge, uh, knowledge about pirates uh, comes from uh, one or two books. It's mainly there's this one book, uh, which is about pirates, and uh, it's this legend that there was this one pirate, and he ha he he was incredibly successful, but eventually he was caught. And it was always said that they that they never found his treasure, and it became very public that he that no one knew where his treasure was. And he said that he buried it, like very publicly said it was it was completely buried and hidden away and all that sort of stuff. And just as he was about to be executed, he pulled something off of his neck and threw it into the crowd and said, "Whoever uses uh, the map there mm -hmm. will find my treasure." And then he was oh. executed. And they never, they've lost the artifact and they never found out where, the, part, the, where, where the, the treasure was. So apparently there is a treasure out there which could be worth incredible amounts of money. Wowzers. And it, this is what Assassin's Creed Pirates is actually based on. It's fascinating. I was talking to the guy who made it and he, he was just like, ah, oh, it's amazing. See, <laughs> like, I, I haven't, I haven't played, played it yet. Yeah. I'm, I was waiting to go next gen before I try and play it. Right, now here's the dodgy bit. I'm just going to dodge around and try and avoid this other pirate ship. Quick, 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 quick. Yeah! Oh, hello. Now there's another ship. So it gives you the top-down view, as you can see, and it shows you in a very Metal Gear Solid sort of way where the other pirates can see. And what you have to do is try and navigate around the right areas. This time, though, I have to go and destroy gunboats. So let's destroy... Is it this guy here? Let's get involved. Mm -hmm. Let's pull up to the right place. There we are. Let's have a fight! Go on, let's have a little rush. A quick skirmish before we go to the final game. And here we go again. We're back on tap. There's two of them to attack this time, though, however. Let's choose to attack that one. I'm going to launch that and go one, two, three. Breaking attack was successful, but they'd already fired first, so I got hit regardless. Here's Let's launch one of these guys. Bam, spot on. Got to wait for that to charge. Charge quicker, charge quicker, charge quicker, you jerk. I'm going to keep focusing on the same ship, because that way, if I can take out one ship and just leave the other standing, that's good for me in terms of attack. Dodge! Ooh, look at that! Perfect dodge. Lovely. That's sweet. Here we go again. Try and see if I can... I'm not going to sink him this time, but I can do some damage. Certainly. Attack! Bam! 35 damage. Lovely. It's quite satisfying, actually, this. I've got, I've got to say. It is. Dodge! So, um, for anybody who's doubting my incredible story, um, uh, <laughs> that is about Assassin's Creed Pirates, uh, I'm posting that into the link. It was a levasseur. You've gone mental, Peter. And, uh, like, yeah, your voice like, has gone to insane. Totally read, read, up, read up about the trick. Incredible. Oh, way. excellent. You're what going in weird. Are you uploading kind of or downloading something? Because your voice has gone absolutely insane. No, nothing. Insane. Literally nothing. Well, doesn't matter. You sound like How a weird, insane has it gone? stuttery robot. Oh, wow. It's alright. Unless you're just... Your visage is slipping and revealing that you are a mad, stuttery robot and have been all <gasps> along infiltrating <gasps> this. You're basically Skynet. Do I sound point. a little bit better now? Yeah, you're fine now. You're fine now. Oh, okay, that's alright. Right I Don't have worry, just I, 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 destroyed yep. them two pirate ships. The boost is chuffed, and I have, I've probably done a thing, and I've got some ships and upgraded some levels and whatever. So there you go, look, swipe to check my new ship. Yay, I can use this new ship now. Check it out. Back to the main menu. Close the main menu, and here we go. My brand new pirate ship. So if you want your own brand new pirate ship, mm -hmm. then you can go and download this. It's Assassin's Creed Pirates. It's now free to download on iPhone and iPad. Um, I don't know when you're going to hit the free to pay wall because we haven't, say, we reviewed it and gave it an okay mark. Um, but that was when it's premium, so it's changed at this point. Don't know how long you can play before it starts demanding money off you, but you can download it, find download out. it, and find out if you're really interested in the piratey thing. Uh, by all means, so out and available right now. Finally, today we're gonna do the the game, the game without which no pirate list could really be complete. It's the oh. the game which all of you. I mean, you can already hear. Mm. You can already hear yeah. that music. Ah. Oh. Oh, here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm just turning my screen around because it's a game that's so old it won't even turn around automatically. Uh, okay. You may have recognized it. I hope you did. If you haven't, then let's pull this bad boy up. A blank screen. Oh, an island deep in the Caribbean. What could it be? Some lovely atmospheric music that's well famous and brilliant. The island of Melly. Where is it? Doing a tap. Uh, who's this chap? And who's this young 
fellow. He looks pretty famous and well known. Who could he be? <laughs> My name's Guybrush Threepwood, My and I right. want to be a pirate. Yes! Secret of Monkey yes. Island is possibly the quintessential piratey pirate game. Of course it is. We loved it when it came out years and years and years ago, back in the 90s. It was one of the LucasArts point-and-click adventures that became one of the most famous ones of the entire genre, really. Created by uh, Ron Gilbert, who was made that game we played earlier, that point-and-click match three Skip 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 of course. But also... Super famously, it's it's a Tim it's a Tim job, isn't it? Oh it's yeah, a Mr. Oh, Tim oh, Schaefer. Tim. Yeah. Timmy. Uh, and one of the few genuinely quite funny games that were ever written. Like getting humour into a game is always really tricky because humour is a lot about timing, and it's difficult to get the timing right when you're doing this point and click. You know, when you control the flow of dialogue, timing's a bit difficult to control. But it was genuinely genuinely funny and entertaining. Mm. And uh, with you. On your search for the Chuck and all of the other, and, and doing so with chickens and various other awesome uh, objects, it was just a brilliant, brilliant game. And it's so brilliant, in fact, that it is one of the very few. I think there's only thirty. I think there's, uh, I think there's just about thirty games that have ever received the Platinum Award from Pocket Gamer, yeah. and it is one of the very few that has. Which is not surprising, because so, it, it was just a classic. And yeah, obviously by today's standards, you might look at it and think it's a bit archaic. It's a, point, it's a classic point-and-click adventure, like one of the classic ones. So there you go, I'm pointing to get into a tavern here. There's a mad bloke hanging from the ceiling, and then there's all the different things you can do. There is this little hand push object. I can push, I can grab hold of things, I can pick things up, I can do something which involves a twisty wheel, don't know what that is. I can speak to people, always very important. I can point at stuff and I can use this magnifying glass to look at things as well. And that's how it works. So talk to pirate, here we go. What are you looking at me for? He what says, look looking all shifty. And you can have a conversation. So I'd like to introduce myself. Excuse me, but I'm looking for the dartboard. Where can I get a drink or oh, sorry to bother you by? I'll do the introduce myself line. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And this time it's actually been fully, fully voiced. I can't remember if the original wasn't fully voiced, I don't believe. So, was it? the very Vincent. original release on floppy disk wasn't, no. on five and a quarter inch floppy disk, Jesus. Um, then there was a talkie version, mm -hmm. which is what LucasArts used to call them talkies, gotcha. which really does show how much games have moved on. I know, I that, that was a big thing. Um, and I think it also came with SVGA graphics. Yeah, wow. Uh, and it's it's yeah, all about right. the S, it's the S that makes it awesome. I, I believe you can play it in EGA. I was hoping, I was looking which for, the, is like, for the old school graphics option, because this is a slightly brushed up, you know, yeah, critified version of it. It's not the original, original graphics that you remember from the, the Amiga or wherever you played it. Yeah. I'll say, I'm sorry. Bye. Yeah. So I've left you him to can, it. Yeah, you can flip between uh, the sort of classic Monkey Island. And, uh, and and these new HD visuals, you can't go quite as far back as the EGA stuff because honestly, why would you want to? Um, but I'm go to the settings and see if I can subtitles, voices in classic edition. Uh, I can't change the graphics in this one at the moment. So it's mm. how to play, and that's going to give me my little tutorial, I presume. Yeah, back. Don't need that. We know how to do this. This point, resume game. Lovely. All right, so let's go and have a word with this guy. Oh, oh yourself, he says. See, and there are classic moments in this game. Possibly the most famous moment that everybody tends to cite is the fight. There's a fight you do at one point, a joust you do with some piratey dude, um, and it's all conducted in insults. So you have to trade insults with one another, and whoever gets the best insults is you kind of like, if you win, if you come up with the perfect retort to his comments, then you go, wah, 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 and you get a hit in and a shot in. I do, I do feel I do feel like the tell me about loom guy really is though for me that's that is Monkey Island like just that that level of yeah, humor yeah. and in joke yeah because loom Cause is a you, massive in joke yeah loom is a game from the way back when and yes if you weren't aware of it probably not aware of it now the, but is but not not only not only was it kind of like a you know big game a, a big game back then it was really hyped up by Luke LucasArts that it was going to be the next project and the people who were working on Monkey Island took the Mickey out of it all day every day when they were actually working on Monkey Island because they saw it as this kind of it was really good and really was quite, quite, um, you know, it advanced the the genre of the point and click forward a little bit. But um, LucasArts really did kind of hype it up to be way more than it ended up being. So this talking about Loom 
is all about how they were overselling it. Yeah. And that's that's the joke. Oh, it's so now we're talking. Uh, as someone pointed out, because I haven't played this version on the iPad before, swipe two fingers across the screen, and lo and behold, classic version. Classic. Original original graphics. This this is much more like it. So you can highlight an object or a person. You can give, open, close, pick up, look at, talk, use, push, or pull. Now that that is what it's all about. So I'm going to talk to this gen over. Let's say talk to this young lady here. See if we can do that. Walk to pirate, he says. Talk to. Oh, here's a dude. Here's a cook. Come, come back, come back. Talk to him. Ah, he's gone away. The bastard. I can walk to the dog or talk to the dog. <laughs> there he is. Hello. Ooh. Dog. Ooh, here we go. Now we're going to go into a, a, an entirely new room. Here are some walk to important looking pirates. Will do. Here they are. Let's talk to them. See what they have to say. Can we, have to, can we have a word? Come on, talk. What ye be wanting, boy? I can either say, I mean to kill you all, I want to be a pirate, or I want to be a fireman. Let's say I want to be a pirate, because, let's be honest, that's what I'm going for he, here. He is Guy Bra you know, Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate. So. He certainly is. There we go. I want to be a pirate, he says. So you've lost the dialogue now, because we're in classic mode. So what? The other guy says. Why bother us? Is that don't forget we're short on help because of this whole LeChuck thing. Eh? It's the first mention of the pirate LeChuck. So, Ooh. so no pirates means no swag, and no swag means no grog, and no grog. We're getting dangerously close to having no grog. That's not good. The pirate is gutted by this. Hmm. They think. Do you have any special skills, <laughs> Kybrush? I can hold my breath for ten minutes. Well. <laughs> Yeah, oh my word. alright, but you don't become a pirate just by asking. You have to go through, dot dot dot, the three trials. <laughs> <laughs> so, so oh man. The other pirate's like, what What three trials are those? Like, no, these are the three trials every pirate must pass. You must master the sword, point one, the art of thievery, and the quest. The other pirate's like, what? what? What treasure, treasure, treasure hunting? You sea urchin. See more, more piratey bands. Top pirate stuff. Right. Top pirate bands, so right there. You got to prove yourself in each of these three areas, and this is all part of the quest in order for you to become a pirate. Now, for me, I'd much rather play it like this, even though it seems to look a lot more lo-fi stuff, and you know, you're using a little kind of reticle crosshair that you're having to move around the screen as if you were controlling the mouse so it's not quite as intuitive point and click wise as the other the other version of it the other usage but this is how it should be done like i'm moving my finger around you can see the uh, little cursory so i can say tell me more about either mastering the sword or treasure hunting or what is that grog stuff anyway <laughs> let's do that what's in that grog anyway and this was like a huge i can't begin to sort of yeah. Quantify the impact that this game had and the reason like, it's such a point and click classic. The reason there aren't, you know, there aren't many funny games that it is, but this is one of the first games that proved that you could do funny yeah, and yeah. that you could do not just funny, but big stories. It's like you must, you know, obviously you have to remember that at this time the arcades were still a really big deal and most people were still thinking, ah, yeah, the, the way video games will work is we'll just port stuff that comes over from the arcades forever and that will always be how it works. Whereas LucasArts were like, no, like, this is this is a home setting. You can have a longer experience. And it's definitely part of that wave that was starting to see console and PC gaming as a different entity to the arcades. Yeah, yeah. So and it, it is really important. And it was like, really good fun. I mean, it was, like you say, it was a big game. Came on, like, multiple discs. I think it was about three or four. Uh, at, the mm. or at least two of them anyway so let's, let's go back into another room just to just to take a look around let's walk to the curtain so if you're not used to these kind of games or if perhaps you've you know you're a little bit younger and you grew up after all this stuff happened yeah this might start this might look a bit like weird and archaic and old-fashioned and everything sure but uh it is it's a little bit magical really and it really if is. you haven't already like haven't gone on one of these adventures yet you haven't played any of the monkey island games they're really cheap like this is only like one pound 99 or two dollars 99 this is a light version the one i'm playing here i just downloaded really really quickly um so it, there's no harm in downloading it and giving it a try and you are kind of unlocking a little piece of video game history video game lore absolutely there. it's a classic i'm absolutely. just gonna walk back yeah, again what I'm going to say is if you want to be, not you, James, you're all playing the game, but if you, viewers, want to be a little part of video game history, then all you need to do is hit that follow button 
right here on Twitch because we are making history every day. Uh, we're making history for your YouTube playlist, we're making history for your past broadcasts here on Twitch. Uh, that was a really terrible analogy. It was but kind of. <laughs> it was awful, <laughs> but that's fine. Uh, so uh, do make sure you hit that follow button uh, because it really does lighten up our day every single uh, every single time that we end up uh, getting a follow. And obviously you can find us on all of the regular places as well. Twitter, Facebook, AppSpy.com, all of these lovely places, and YouTube. Yeah, go, oh. and, find, go and have a look at the YouTube channel. This is where this all started. We have a, mm. a YouTube channel that serves lots and lots and lots of hands-on videos and reviews and playthroughs and opinion features and things like that every day of the week, all to do with iPhone and iPad-related games. We are the iOS mm. channel, and if you're interested in watching stuff and seeing what games look like in advance, come to us. Subscribe to all of our channels and we will tell you every day numerous videos of what's new and exciting and out and about. In fact, we dedicate an entire stream to it every Wednesday, same time as this uh, stream we did today. Five days a week we cover. On Wednesday we do Eye on the App Store, which is a stream where we show you all the new releases that are going to come out in the next 24 hours before they appear on the App Store. We give you a heads up look. Uh, we also do um, a Monster Hunter playthrough, which we do every Friday, which someone's already mentioned in the chat room. Yes, we will be going back to doing Monster Hunter. We do it every Friday for an hour, and we play through. We've been doing it for about two months now, two, three months, and yep. we're, we're just yep. starting to get somewhere, starting to get some halfway decent <laughs> weapons and armor. It's not it's not an expert guy. Don't go in expecting mad skills. No, no, but it's just no. a way for us to actually play a multiplayer game between three of us, myself, Peter, and Harry from Pocket Gamer, uh, and actually just have some fun over the course of the week, which is, which is a nice thing for us to do at the end but the rest of the days monday through friday we are covering your iphone and ipad related gaming that pretty much wraps it up for today you can't really top secret of monkey island in terms of pirate nah, games that's nah. that's the top of the list that's the top of the hierarchy so if you haven't played it already and you fancy giving it a look we've only shown you a fraction of it. it's one pound 99 or two dollars 99 on the app store iphone and ipad or you can download a little trial version for free so if you haven't you haven't done it you've basically got no excuse Go and have a look. Mm -hmm. See what see what you think. Uh, thank you for joining us today uh, on the Pocket Gamer and Apps by Twitch stream. And if you join us from the front page for the first time, hit follow and come back again tomorrow and all the days afterwards. We'll be here waiting for you to show you more iPhone and iPad gaming related stuff. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.